Hey everybody, Corey here coming at you with another knife product video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the entire KPL Lube lineup as well as their recently released KPL Knife Shield. If you're new around here, consider subscribing, all that good stuff. Anyhow, let's get into the short and dirty of this because I think this can be relatively straightforward. If you're not a huge knife guy, if you're not obsessed with squeezing out optimal performance from every single knife that you have, and more importantly, if you're just not interested in spending that much money on knife maintenance, what you're going to want to get is the KPL Regular. You can use this on the blade to protect it from moisture. You can use this on the pivot to kind of keep it running smooth. You can use it on the detent ball. Um, it, it's just, it's your all-purpose lube. It's perfectly fine. If you're not willing to shell out a ton of money and you really just don't care that much, you're probably going to want to get KPL Regular. I don't have a whole lot more to say about KPL Regular because it's just it's an all-purpose lube. Put it wherever you want, why ever you want. Um, little side note, I actually like to use the KPL regular to protect my blades. That's what I was doing before Knife Shield. So I would like put this on a cloth and I would just rub down the blades so that they had some kind of a layer of protection against moisture. Um, if I'm being honest, I have also used this just to kind of brighten up the handles. So it's nice to kind of rub this on the titanium and give it like a fresh, clean coat, a nice shiny look, whatever the case might be. That's a bit excessive, but it's something that I do. Now, if you are willing and able to spend the money, if you're the kind of person who really likes to geek out on your knives, you might want to consider buying the KPL Heavy and the KPL Ultralight. So what I would use these for, so instead of ever using KPL Normal, okay, KPL Heavy is amazing for detent balls and detent tracks. I'm not a physicist. I'm not a chemist. I can't go into the details of why this one is so amazing. But because of the pressure on the detent ball and the detent track, that's why you want a thicker lube. There's more pressure. A lighter lube is going to kind of get swept away a little bit more quickly. It's not going to have as much of an impact. KPL Heavy is actually the lube that has increased the performance on my knives by the most substantial amount. Do not underestimate the effect of putting a heavy lube on your detent ball in your detent track. If you put it in the pivot, if you put it on the bearings, it will slow it down. If you put it on the detent ball or the detent track, I promise you it will make it smoother and it will make it faster, okay? So that's what I use KPL Heavy for. That is the only thing I use KPL Heavy for. And honestly, this is another one you could get away with if you didn't want to lube the rest of the knife. This, this one alone probably gives you uh, the best increase in performance across all the products. Next up is the ultralight. I like to use ultralight for inside of my pivot and the bearings or the washers, whatever the case might be. This is very thin. It's very light. You can use it on parts that don't create a ton of friction and parts that you still want to lubricate, but you want them to run as quickly as possible. This I would recommend most for stainless steel ball bearings or stainless steel washers because it's going to not slow down the performance so much, but it's going to help increase the, uh, the corrosion resistance inside of your pivot. This is just a good choice. If you want to optimize your action while still protecting everything inside of the pivot, this is what I would add to the inside of the pivot. But again, these are going to run you, I, I think these go for 25 bucks a piece now. I could be wrong. Some are between 20 and 25. So getting a little pricey for knife maintenance. So just consider those things when you are talking about uh, you know, maximizing performance versus the money that you're going to spend. Now, there's one weird little detail that I swore I wasn't going to talk about. Some people like the smell of KPL. I have to assume that they did this on purpose. I don't know why they would. It kind of smells like cinnamon, okay? And when I say kind of, I mean it's definitely cinnamon. I don't know why. I don't know how. Maybe it's just a thing, but it smells like cinnamon. That being said, if you fidget with your knife a lot, a lot, and if you try to break in your knife while this is on your knife, it's still going to perform the same, but I've actually noticed that it smells like burning rubber. Why are we talking about smells right now? I'll tell you why, and this is something I don't think many people would expect. Let's move on to uh, KPL Knife Shield. I promise we'll get back to the smell. Um, knife Shield, it's, it's meant to protect your knives. It was developed purposefully, as they say, oh, let's see, cleans and degreases, polishes, prevents rust, corrosion, rust and corrosion on metal surfaces, right? So they are intending for you to use this to clean the knife, to polish the knife, and to protect the knife. That's all fine and dandy. I'm sure it does those things. But for me personally, 
What I have noticed is that this tends to leave behind a kind of tacky texture on whatever surface you apply it to. That might not bug you, um, and it normally wouldn't bug me, but I've also noticed that maybe it does clean, maybe it does polish, that's great, but it kind of leaves behind a little bit of a film. So whatever blade you apply it to, if you're looking to have a really pretty knife or whatever the case might be, this might not be the option that you want. It kind of fogs things up. It kind of fogs up the finishes, especially on satins. Um, and when I've sprayed it on DLC coatings, you can actually see the streaks where I've wiped it away. If you wait too long to wipe it away, it almost becomes gummy. And I've had a rag kind of drag across it. This product is a little strange for me. And if it wasn't for the texture that it leaves behind and the kind of fogginess that it can leave on some of your, your surfaces, um, I would be all for it. If I'm being completely honest, this one doesn't quite live up to the hype for me. Maybe I'll continue playing around with it. It is what it is. Now, going back to smells. I'm going to be honest. I really didn't care uh, anything about when people are like, oh, it smells like cinnamon. Yeah, it does. Great. Whatever. I don't care what my lube smells like. This, however, I'm going to be completely honest with you. And this is just the weirdest thing. I never thought I'd have to say this in a review. Uh, for any of you dog owners out there, I can wholeheartedly say that this smells like when a dog expresses its anal glands, okay? If you've never smelled that before, just think of rotting dead fish, okay? It's not extremely potent. It's more potent when you spray it and when it's drying, but it definitely does linger a little bit even after it's dry. Um... I just found it kind of ironic that a company that very uniquely and specifically made their lubes smell like cinnamon, and, and that was like a thing. Um, I, I don't know if they didn't have a choice. I don't know if R&D just couldn't find a way around the fishy smell, uh, but Knife Shield, at least this bottle that I received brand new from KPL, it smells like canine anal glands. <laughs> That's the best way I can describe it. So... Hope this helped you to some degree. Again, the lubes, I love them. They've all got their place. Um, if you're just looking for an all-purpose lube, KPL Normal is perfectly great. It's nice having a dedicated lube for your knives. You don't have to wonder about, okay, I got real oil. I got this other stuff. You know, they made this for knives, and it works well for knives. So, guys, hope you enjoyed this. I will see you next time. Light a candle. Stay smelling fresh. <laughs> see ya.